Interpol has officially entered the metaverse. It seems with Do Kwon nowhere to be found in Singapore, South Korea or beyond, the only place left for Interpol to look is in the metaverse. As thrilling as it might be to imagine Do Kwon running from the feds in the virtual world, Matrix style, let's not fall for Yahoo's clickbait thumbnails and investigate this a little bit further. What's up with Interpol? And why are they claiming to have entered the metaverse? If you're thinking, damn, I missed out on the Wild West days of the metaverse because Interpol is already in town, you can save that thought for later. Interpol hasn't really entered the metaverse because a singular, all-encompassing metaverse doesn't really exist yet. See, up until this point, the metaverse is still more of an idea or a marketing term than it is a working reality. When talking about the metaverse, proponents often reference Matthew Ball, author of the 2021 book Metaverse Primer. In that book, and this is really a super simplified take, but he essentially describes the metaverse as this expansive network of connected real-time rendered 3D worlds where you can socialize, buy or sell assets or land, play games, and do much more as a virtual avatar. Now you might be saying, isn't Fortnite already just that? In a way you're right, but Fortnite is just a standalone virtual world. A good, yet super simplified way to think of a fully functional metaverse is one where the character you use for Fortnite could also access and take part in a vast network of other virtual worlds that may not have the same rules or formalities, but are still compatible. Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Fortnite publisher Epic, likes to say that they're just building one piece of a large interconnected metaverse, similar to an individual social network on the present day internet. Now that brings us back to Interpol, who announced last week at the 90th Interpol General Assembly in New Delhi that they have created the first ever metaverse specifically designed for law enforcement worldwide. So they haven't entered the metaverse. But what they have done is create a virtual replica of their headquarters in France where registered users can tour the headquarters virtually, interact with other officers via their avatars, and even take immersive training courses in forensic investigation and other policing tactics inside their metaverse. And no, this isn't a parody. This is actually where international officers are supposed to fight or learn how to fight crime. So what does this mean for the DeFi space? Interpol's move is significant because financial transactions in the metaverse will happen through cryptocurrencies, since the metaverse isn't bound to a sovereign nation with its own centralized financial system. That's already the case in virtual worlds like Decentraland and Sandbox, where payments are always made through cryptocurrencies. Interpol has already stated that cyber and financial crime often starts with laundering cryptocurrencies, which is eventually used by criminal organizations to fund real life crimes. So, Knowing that the metaverse is going to be this whole nother realm where cryptocurrency transactions will take place, Interpol knows there's going to be a huge potential for money laundering to take place in the metaverse. And we're not talking about small sums when it comes to money laundering in the world of crypto. In fact, the FTC estimates that over 1 billion has been lost to crypto scams in the past 15 months alone, and that a lot of that money is being laundered by criminals. In total, an estimated $33 billion worth of cryptocurrency has been laundered since 2017 and mostly taken on to centralized exchanges. Considering how Grayscale and JP Morgan estimated that the metaverse could become a trillion dollar industry by 2026, the metaverse is all the more attractive for criminals who will have a massive number of users to potentially scram crypto from. We have to remember that the metaverse is supposed to simulate our real world allowing us to do all the types of things we do in real life, but virtually with other people who aren't in the same physical space as us. That means socializing, but it can also mean spending money on digital assets like art, music, or even land. But just like in real life where crime happens, you can bet that crimes will also happen in the metaverse. In fact, we're already seeing it happen. Early reports from Meta's Horizon Worlds have found that servers are already full with people sexually harassing other users and using casually racist language. Interpol says that if it wants to stop crimes in the metaverse, then law enforcement officers have to experience the metaverse for themselves. That's actually their stated motivation behind the creation of their new metaverse. Which begs the question, what kinds of experiences are Interpol agents having in the metaverse that's gonna help them stop financial crimes such as hacking and scamming? At the moment, that bit is far from clear. Interpol has revealed that officers are already doing training in the metaverse for travel, document verification, and passenger screening at airports. But what does that have to do with any crimes in the metaverse? If anything, the metaverse as they're describing it is now just a virtual classroom for training for everyday policing. 
If you ask us, the fact that Interpol has created and promoted their virtual world as a metaverse is more of a PR tactic, a warning message to criminals plotting to take advantage of the unregulated metaverse space, telling them that if they think they can get away with crime in the metaverse without Interpol being on their case, then they better think again. Still, whether the Interpol metaverse will actually be effective in helping agents stop financial hacks, I guess we'll have to find out when the metaverse starts living up to the hype. For now, that's all. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again for tomorrow's video.